Welcome to Board Game Empire. We're going to be showing you the prototype of Magical Friends and be showing you how to play in a full playthrough. This will be coming to Kickstarter very soon. Um, it's We enjoy playing this game. It's a game where you are summoning creatures, um, moving them throughout the board, and trying to make them from your starting area all the way to the tavern. And remember, this is a prototype, so this is why the game board looks a little rough. It's been shipped several times to many uh, game reviewers and content creators, so I think it got a little damaged in shipping um, along the way. But the mechanics of this game are really cool. Um, the coolest part is when you summon a creature, they have a corresponding number. So this is a 12. It's the giant friend. So you find the 12 here, it has a little standy, and there's your giant, and you just place it in your starting area. So it's pretty cool. Some of them have multiple creatures you get when you summon them. Um, the biggest one is the skeletons. You get five of them. So if there's more than one of that number, you get all of them to start with. And when you get a creature, pull it, and you take your gingerbread heart, place it on the creature, and then, here, let me get this out of the way. And then you place it in your starting area. So this is how you know whose character is whose. And you're trying to get to the tavern. There's several different paths you could take. I'll go over that in a moment. Um, normally, you are summoning one creature from the summoning board. But in a two-player game, you do two, you summon two creatures at a time. Um, so we pulled out, we figured out quickly, especially if you get the skeletons, you are going to run out of the gingerbread hearts. But of course, this is the prototype, so there might be more in the regular game. In this prototype, there weren't enough of my color, which I'm blue, he's black. Um, so I brought out a second, we each brought out a second set of gingerbread hearts, just in case we run out and need to place them on our characters. Um, but normally you would only have your color. There's different color player boards. They do not have any special abilities. It's just the color um, that you are. Um, he's Donnie, Donnie Dark Matter. I am Melina Mapletooth. <laughs> so I am blue. He is black. And you get the corresponding artifact cards. These are numbered 1 through 11. And those are used to determine who plays first. There is a first, you see the little beer, um, the little beer icon uh, there. Okay. Sorry, I went blank. Um, it's late. That determines the first player. So I'm blue, he is black. So just to, for easiness sake, we're going to be moving it back and forth so you know who the first player is. Um, you can also do it on your player boards, but we're trying to make it to where you can see as much as possible. I think you could see everything but Anthony's player board. So we wanted you to be able to see everything to make it more enjoyable to watch. So during the very first thing you do is you secretly choose, well, that's not a secret. Whoever goes first chooses one of their artifacts numbered one through 11. You place it here on your player board, that is your number. He will place one on his player board. Whoever has the highest number gets to move first, gets to summon the first creature. So you can see right away, the creatures have, a lot of them have special abilities. They've got um, some to get more than one creature. Um, they can slay characters. They're, the creatures have a lot of different abilities. Um, and I'll go over that anatomy in just a moment. But whoever has the highest number gets to go first. The first player token, that only determines who gets to choose their card first. The only restriction is you cannot choose the same number as another, another player. So he cannot choose 11. He could choose any number but 11. But 11 being the highest, it would kind of be a waste for him to choose anything but the lowest unless... He wants to use a special ability. The lower cards, the lower artifacts have more special abilities than the higher ones. So the one has three blue feet. So that's a bonus move, three moves on any one character um, 
on the board. The two has two bonus moves and a wand, so it gives you one spell ability. I will go over that in a moment, but the characters that have magic abilities require a certain amount of wands. So some of your creatures give you wands, and some of your cards you play give you additional wands. You can use, like if you have two different characters that require spells, each of them require two. You could, if you have two wands, you can do the abilities for both of them. You do not have to have two for this one, two for that one. It's just you have to have a certain amount of wands to do the spells for all your creatures that of the wand level or less, if that makes sense. The three just has two feet. The four has two wands. So that would be good to play if you want to cast some spells. The five has one foot, so that's one bonus movement and one poison. If you land on a character and you have a poison ability, you can poison them. And what that means is your gingerbread heart starts out like this. If you're poisoned, you have to flip it over to show the pink little bottle. If you're poisoned the second time, that character dies. Um, the six has one bonus movement. The seven has one wand. And then the eight, nine, 10, and 11 have no special abilities. So there's more than one reason to choose your starting number card, depending on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to be the first to choose, you're going to want to pick your highest card. If you are looking, because you're going to have quite a few characters um, once you've played a few rounds, you're going to, especially with the two player games, we're drawing two at a time and all of them have abilities. Some of them are once per turn. Some of them are um, basically you have to cast that spell to do it. So it's, you're going to be Oh, and some of them are when you land on players, depending on what kind of characters they are. If they're small, medium, or large are characters. You evil. Yeah, good, some are neutral. evil, neutral, and good. good. So they all do different things. They're all um, kind of affected by different things. Like in the heaven, good creatures can't be targeted, you can't be slain. But in hell, if it flips over to hell, um, Evil creatures, let's see what it says. Evil creatures can slay other creatures by moving them into hell. So uh, there's different scenarios in the portal here where you can switch to, to heaven to hell. So I'll go over all that in just a moment. But it's, it, there's a, it's a simple game, simple mechanics, really cool, unique mechanics. But it does have a quite a bit going on, but the, it flows really well in the sense that um, you're not trying to remember all these different things. It's pretty basic. You are doing the same things each time, but with different characters, so that adds the excitement to it. It's not like a repetitive motion where you're just doing the same thing every time. Your characters are always different. You're going to have different characters as you play more and more rounds, so you're keeping up with their character and abilities. Um, some of them have wings, if they have a wing on them, or two wings. That means that particular character, when you move, how your feet let you move, they allow you to move an additional move for each wing that's on that character. So that's a, a huge ability. He had the phoenix. There's two phoenixes you get. Like if phoenix. they're slain, they come back. They never die. So they may die at that moment, but they come back the very next turn. So that's also a good creature to have. Um, so I'm going to go over the anatomy of the creatures, and then I'll go over the board, um, and then a few more components, and then we'll get to playing. So here's a few creatures. Hopefully we have them out here. I didn't I pulled them out randomly, so I didn't really look at what I was... Uh, I want to show them. Oh, I got everything I could show them. Okay, so this is a giant. You can see it's a large and it's neutral. And those, that terminology matters. There are certain characters that will target large, medium, or small. They target good, neutral, or evil. And it's all on the card. They target certain types of characters. So that will come into play 
when you're slaying or targeting or moving certain creatures backwards. Um, in the upper right, that is your basic movement. These are only used at the time you summon a creature. Beyond that point, you will only be using their special ability if applicable. The basic movement does not come into play. Like the giant friend here, he's really, he comes in handy. He can take small and medium sized creatures with him. The creatures have to be on the same spot when the giant begins movement. So if you have the giant and two other creatures of yours on the same space that are small and medium, and majority of them are small and medium, when he moves, they move with him. So that's a big advantage of getting closer to that tavern because the person that wins is the person with the most in the tavern. And there's a bonus when you slay another player's creature, you get to take their heart as a trophy. So the person with the most trophies at the end of the game gets a bonus creature in the tavern that it counts as another creature. So if you're tied and you have more hearts, you're gonna win because you have more trophies. But if you have just more creatures and you've way surpassed, you're gonna win. So the goal of the game is to get the most creatures you can in that tavern. So this giant friend is a huge advantage. Um, in our instance, where we're drawing two creatures at one time, you can choose, you can see both of them have basic movements, but you're gonna only be choosing the basic movement of one of them. So the giant can move three times two feet. So that means you can use three different characters if you have three to move. You can never move one character more than once with a basic movement. So that's one basic movement per character that has already been moved. So three characters can move twice, two, two spaces. Or on this one, two characters can move three spaces. So if you only have two characters, you're probably gonna to wanna to choose the movement of this one. But in a two player game, you can do that basic movement on whichever character you choose twice. But again, you can only move a different character. So in that instance, early in the game, you're probably not gonna have four characters to move, but if it's later in the rounds, you have four characters, you could actually move four of your, four of your characters three spaces. Um, this one has magic and flight. You can see right there, the wand and the wing. So that means every time you move this imp friend, not only do you get your basic movement, you also get an additional movement for the wing. It's a fly, it's flying, so it goes one additional space. It also provides you with a wand. So this, as long as this creature is alive and in your tableau, you will always have that one wand to use for any spells that you need to use it for. This one is a magic creature, and there's a little three in the parentheses. It requires three magic wands to perform that spell. So again, as long as you have three of those wands anywhere total in your tableau, you're good. So once per turn, you can swap one creature from the discard pile with one card in the creature overview. So the discard pile is here in the archives. At the end of each round, we will be discarding the last card here. You can just, if there's a card you wanted that got discarded before you could grab it, you might wanna change it out for one of these that are available. There'll always be one here as well. That's a preview for what is coming up on the next round but you have four to choose from every round. Um, so that might be a good ability. This one provides you with two wands. So you always have two wands to use for your magic. And when the old friend reaches a tavern, the game ends. Wow, we didn't get that one. So no, this is the old friend. So if you get this guy to the tavern and you're winning, you've won the game because he will end the game. That's, a, I didn't see that one come out. That's a pretty good one. So I think they were, I can't remember where they were. But in a two and three player game, you will have four, or a two and four player game, sorry. 
In a three player game, you will only have three available. Um, but two to four player games, there's four. For obvious reasons, on a two player game, I thought that was odd when I was first reading the rules that they'd be more available than in a three player game. But it makes sense after I read on that shows we are each picking two characters. So we will be picking all of the characters every time. So we technically won't be archiving any, actually. Um, in a normal game, you would archive the one that is the closest to the archive, move these over, pull that one down, and then fill it up with another one. But being that there's no um, cards left in a two-player game, there wouldn't be anything archived unless they are slain. Then they would go in the discard pile. Um, so the player board... We are doing the starting game for a two to four player game, and they suggest using the Dark Caves, Strange Portal, Stairway to Heaven, and the Fairy Trail. So we should actually be using, we were using the Lava, but you want, they want us to use the Dark Caves. The Lava one, these are two sided as you can see. In rounds three and six, the lava comes up and any players in this area are slain. In the dark caves, see we did, that's what this is for. They suggest using this in a two to four player game. You roll the dice in the direct, in which direction you move at this crossroads. Oh, okay, when you get to it, let me look how, we didn't play that one, we played the, the hail. As soon as a friend has moved beyond the first cave space, a die must be rolled. You have to announce how far you want to move before rolling. Depending on the result, one to two, on this way, a friend will be... Oh, so you could be poisoned. If you roll three or four, um, the fastest way is to the party. Congratulations. If you roll five or six, your friends make a small detour. Otherwise, nothing happens to him. So the lava one is the one we were playing. I think we're going to stick with the lava. Yeah. So that one, in round three or six, if you're in these two spots, you perish. Your character is slain. I already explained the heaven one. Um, if you're on one of these four spots and you're a good character or neutral, um, is it only good? or Oh, it's only good. Only good characters cannot be slain in heaven. This is the fairy trail. At the end of each round, we will be rolling this dice. Um, depending on if it's a one or two, it goes here. Three or four, it goes there. Five or six, it goes here. If you land on that spot, you get a fairy or pixie dust card. Um, that allows you a bonus move to use any time. You get three bonus moves, but whatever character you use it on also gets poisoned. So if you use it on yourself, you will be poisoned. Um, if you are slain, you will get a pity power, which you can use any time to do two additional bonus movements. During the game, you get each character can do one bonus movement and one basic movement. So whatever bonus movements you have with those cards, with your um, characters, your artifacts, the bonus movements are in green, I think, and the... Let me look. Yeah, and the basic movements are in white. So they're different colors. Um, then there's the magic portal. This is very helpful. When you get to this space, if you have a character on this space, for, from here on out, as long as you have a character on that space, instead of summoning your creature here, they're summoned here. So you can see it bypasses several moves and brings your character right here in the tavern oh wait sorry <laughs> and the tavern goes is right there so you you're basically gaining quite a few movements by doing that i had i did that a lot last game and that helped me to win right here if you land on that spot is when you switch from heaven to hell and that gives the benefit to the bad the evil creatures um as you can see, each color is represented. Anthony will start his characters here. I will start my character there. There's no advantage. They each have the same 
distance from the start. Of, this is a start, but this is the first space you move. All these little circles are a space. Um, you will be moving, of course, through the tavern. Some spaces, this space, this path is a little longer. But if you get a character here, you will be able to bring your characters here and have a shorter track to the tavern. Um, the, this is the sh one of the shortest distances, but, um, and this is one of the shortest, but of course in rounds three and six, you could die if you're still in there. But I think I covered everything. You missed one. What did I miss? Uh, round oh, seven, yeah. you start here. And round eight, you get to move one extra move. Right, you, it's called a tailwind. So you do start, you, you summon them here. And in round eight, you summon them here and you add one bonus move to both your basic and your bonus moves. And you're gonna be moving your round tracker each time at the end of the round and refreshing the summoning board and rolling the fairy dice. So I am the first player. So I haven't looked at these creatures yet. I definitely want to get the old friend. Oh, pretty sure he was at the not available. Yeah, he was at the preview. All right. I know that because that, that's who I was going to okay, get. Okay, so I'm going to do the gnome. Oh, wait, wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? I have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to play my 11. That means there's no way he can beat me. He has to play a lower number, depending on what he's going for. He's playing the one. So I'm gonna get the gnome. And... The giant friend. So I get number 21. and number 12. So the gnome is a good character and the giant is a neutral and I'm going to be putting my hearts on them and they both start here and the giant can move that gnome because she's small and you can't, I'm going to be putting these down underneath. I know you can't see them but um, oh I get two gnomes. Sorry. There's two of the gnomes. So I'm starting right away with three creatures. Okay, and that was the only, there's no special ability of the gnome. And the giant can move small creatures. So I'm going to choose, they both have the same basic movement of moving three characters, two spaces. So I'm just going to use the giant to move them all there. And there's no limit to how many creatures can be in a space. Um, however, if someone lands on you and they have an, they're an evil character, they can slay all of your characters. That's the one disadvantage to me being there. If he has one that can slay me, he could slay all of them at one time. So I'm taking a risk in saying that. I think I'm going to move one of my gnomes here instead. Okay. That way he can't slay all of them at one time. And then uh, you move this. Mine doesn't have any special bonus moves. I move that to the discard. And I am done with my turn. Alright, so I have to get these two. 19 and 37. So he gets 37. And 19. And some of them, none of these do. Some of the characters also give you spells and movements. It would be on the top of their creature if they do. So he got the water elemental friend and the imp friend. And they're once per turn creatures. And now he gets to choose to do one of their movements twice. Really? That one only moves two. The other one moves three. Yeah, but I could take that one with me. Oh, the Waller Elemental can move other creatures one space forward or backward when moving to the... You have to move on them. All right. I'm doing this one twice then. Okay. So he's going to move each character three spaces. 
Okay. And then I move. And he has three bonus moves. He can move on one of them. Let's see. He's already going to be close to the tavern. One, two, three. Okay. Are you done? Yep. So he discards that. And we roll. Goes right here. All right. We move this down. Refresh those four slots. We roll the fairy dice. It's now a two. And we move the round tracker. Okay, so he is now first player, so he moves the beer to his color. And he gets to choose which archive he wants to play first. Oh. 11. I'll put it there so people oh, okay. see 11. He's wanting the old friend, is why. Hey, he's my old friend. <laughs> All right, so I am going to play the number one because it gives me three bonus moves. I need to book it to the tavern so he won't want to get his old friend to the tavern very quickly. That could make for a short game getting him really early like that. Alright, I got mine too. So he got the old friend, number 26. I'm just pure evil. And all, all of his are evil except for one. And the troll friend, which is 34. And the troll friend, you can tell when they're evil, it's got that little symbol on top of them. Alright. It's weird your others didn't have the evil on top. It, oh, it means dangerous creature, not evil. That's what that means, sorry. Dangerous creature. So that means they have the ability to slay you. When you see that symbol on top, you got to watch out for them. Okay, so which movement are you duplicating? Um, you can do both the moves on one, but then you can do a second time one of the moves. Yeah. I not meet the requirements for you to slay me? You do for one of them. All right, I'm gonna move this one. So, so you can move two. one character two and one character one. One, two, and I slay this one. Okay, so he slayed my gnome. So he gets my little gingerbread heart as a trophy. And the gnome goes away. Or only one of my gnomes. So I'm just going to put it back here in the box. My turn? Well, you get to move another one, one. And then you can duplicate either the two or the one. I'm going to do two. Oh, a different character. Different character. All right. Okay. So my choices are these, and they are the gargoyle, which is a neutral medium, number 32, and the pegasus, number Yeah, Amanda kicked my butt the first game. Yes, he's got a, a vengeance for me now. A tire vengeance. <laughs> tire, I'm still I'm tired, but I'm still hoping to be the winner. Okay, so my gargoyle, they both have wings, but if you don't use movement for the gargoyle, he can't be slain or poisoned until next turn. So if he just sits somewhere, I mean, he won't be targeted here. Um, he's safe. Um, 
The Pegasus can take good creatures with him. The creatures have to be on the same spot when the Pegasus begins movement. So I am going to move three characters, two spaces. Um, first, I'm going to move my gargoyle and my Pegasus, these two spaces, and then I'm going to take them with the giant. One, two. So they're all right here. I hope his troll does not. What does the troll do? You kill a medium and small. He moves on too. They're all medium. Or two of them are medium. I don't like that troll. I'm just going to have to chance it. Oh, actually, they these two move. Wait, here. They would move. My gnome gets to move again, so... I, those could have moved an extra movement. That would be in distance of the troll, too. So I'm going to move this one. She is a good character. One, two. And I have three bonus moves. So I'm going to move my Pegasus, one, two, three, and I have to switch this to hell. See, look what you did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we both take our turns? Yep. Okay. Roll the dice. That's there. We'll move around tracker to three. And I get to choose first my card. See what I'm looking at. Oh, I'm gonna play the ten. Play with ten. Mm -hmm. Anthony played his two. Okay, so I'm going to choose the goblin friend and. Too bad I don't have a creature on the portal. Okay. And. Okay. And this is why I needed to go first to get out of his uh, range on this, got his uh, troll. So, giant can move that gargoyle. So I can move three characters, three spaces. So one, two, three. Then I can move two. There's the giant was moving that one, so I have two more moves. And what does this do? Right here, correct? And my goblin, one, two, three. And I'm going to move this one, one, two, three. Okay, so now let me look here. 
gargle mint. Okay, so I'm done. Your turn. Mm -hmm. You give me one and thirty-eight. One and thirty-eight. Yeah. That's a dangerous creature that also stops you if you land on them. And he's got the werewolf. All right. I'm moving three. How many people can you move three creatures? Three of three. Have three. Okay. One, two, three. We're around three. Oh, this one dies. They all die. You don't want to move that. That one perished. So it's round three. Oh, so I don't want to move there, do I? Uh-uh. So you can't move through there. And if you're on there, when round three, you die. So this one's gone. Who was that? So you need to discard number 37 into the archives. Right here. Okay. So I'm just going to do two. And two and two. I'm sure I can't do this, I'll die. Go this way. Yeah, good point. One, two. Okay. Is your turn over? Are you doing your bonus moves or your wands? That's what that was my bonus move. Oh, you can only move one, two. That's bonus move. Oh. And did you do one move twice? No. You're not doing that? Yeah, I will. So. How many creatures can you move? I can move up to t t three. So you two more creatures? Yeah. One. You can't move the same ones again. Oh, yeah. One. I thought it was two moves. You gotta do the same move you just did twice. You're moving them two, not three. Ah. Could you move them three? Well, it says three. Why creatures. did you only move this one two? I moved to three. Oh, we well need to move two characters. Three. And that's what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> You're the one to stop me. <laughs> All right, done. Can't you move another one? No, that was my All three. Right. So now it's in the round. Here, we refresh those. Yeah, she was confusing. <laughs> Although I was We're already doing the four. right thing. We're in round four. And um, Anthony gets to choose first which number card he's going to. We move the beer thing. All right then. What are our creatures? I've been forgetting that I can move mine. Oh, actually, I didn't because they were moved. Never mind, I didn't forget. Six. And Hero's Soul Friend. So thirty three and five. And 
I can move one character three times or two characters two. So I can move four characters two. I'm going to use my giant to move. One, two, and three more characters, too. Do one more, right? Um, Succubus has wings, so she would go one, two. She's evil, so I'm going to just put her there. And, and once per turn, see if I have enough magic. I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. You give me 23 and 3. Okay, so I'm moving three, three spaces. Spaces. I'm done. Okay. All right. So I get to choose the number first. We are going to refresh everything. We're around five. He's trying to get his old friend in there, which I don't think you're going to want to. So I'm going to refresh the summon board. So glad I get to go first. I picked my nine. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. I picked ten. Oh, I didn't know you had ten. <sighs> Dang it. Ah. Uh, you're awful. Thank you. <laughs> That's why. I was trying my, to get mine there. Most of my cards are evil. <laughs> Thanks at that one. One, two, three, four, five, so five six, seven. Seven out of the ten cards I have are evil. <laughs> okay, so... Which ones did you get? 17 and 35. Yeah, he's won the game. He's going to make it to where the game... Does it end immediately? Yeah. I was so close. <laughs> I had I would have gotten all of these into the tavern next time. Let's see all of them. Well, for reaches tavern, the game ends. Proceed. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. I get to go move two characters. <laughs> so, uh, just for the one, two. <laughs> one. Okay, game ends. Okay, so he won because I didn't have any in the tavern. He had two in the tavern and a heart, so if I had only gotten two in, he was still one because he had a trophy. I, I was just waiting for her to uh, start the game. <laughs> and so she, uh, she, I, I kind of make sure not to talk much during the game so she can forget about the old, old I friend. I knew about the old friend. I couldn't do anything <laughs> about him. There was nothing I could do about him. Yeah. I didn't have any creatures that could... Yeah, Close see, enough to get him. Because he's he's one of the bigger creatures with the L. And, right. And he's evil. None of mine got large creatures. They were all... Most of your slay characters slay small and medium creatures. So mm -hmm. he's he's OP. And he got him first card in the game. So, yeah, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> so, normally the game lasts a full eight rounds. But... Um, Anthony ended it quickly because he got the old friend. But hopefully this helped you to decide whether this is a game you'd want to back. I think this is a, a uh, fun game. Yeah. And this is just a prototype. So who knows what they will um, add 
dirt for the stretch goals and things. It is its second ramp time going through, yeah, right? Yeah, and this uh, relaunch, and I can't see why this game is uh, really fun compared to a lot of games we played. So. Well, it fund, didn't it fund the first one? Yeah, I think it funded it. They just, obviously, it was when the freight charges were way too high. I'm guessing they just couldn't see they need more money. Right. So, so definitely, we, we will put the link in the description so you can follow this game. I would definitely, if you're into these type games, check it out because I'm the fact that it funded the first time, it will probably fund mm -hmm. again because it has more hype, more people have covered it. Um, and we enjoyed it. We, yeah. we think this is a fun game. And I could totally see them adding more... Um, Maybe balancing it a little. The old old friends a little unbalanced, but who knows? If it came later in the game, it would be different. So I guess it depends on when it comes in the well, game. They can also add tiles in, in yeah. different areas, or even change the tiles that we. Did I? Um, I don't think I landed on this. They are special tiles if you land mm -hmm. on on the board. There's not many, but this one I forget what it does. I had it out so I could see. But they have little signage of things they do when you land on those tiles. I never got to show you the portal because I didn't have any that landed there. Um, but that was a huge advantage. This was a totally different game this time than last game. I will say that because it all depends on which creatures come out and how you play your your artifacts. Like there, There's a lot of variables in this game mm -hmm. that change it up a lot. So um, definitely um, one you should check out. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like. Feel free to leave a comment. If you're not already, please subscribe to our channel. We also have the ability to join our channel, which is, it's a very small fee, like $3 a month. It helps us to support our channel to, um, as we grow to um, work towards purchasing better equipment so our videos could be even better. We're trying to save money so we can get more cameras so we won't have to cram it all in one spot. We'll be able to show you each of our player boards as we're playing, things like that. So that's what we're working towards. So thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you next time.